Hi everyone, welcome to Math 6. We're going to go over Lesson 2-3 today. 2-3, Absolute Values of Rational Numbers. In this lesson, you will be able to find and interpret absolute value after this lesson. Let's look at solve and discuss it on page 81. A portion of a bank account statement is shown below. How would you interpret a value of the ending balance? Explain. Okay. So look at the information we have in the picture. We have a Crest Bank, right? We got card number and we have an account statement. Ending balance is negative $30. How would you interpret the value of the ending balance? What does this mean? Mm -hmm. So you can see that the person did not earn money, right? So the person withdrew $30 more than they had in their accounts. You have zero money. You shouldn't be able to use anything, but credit card, lets you use more than what you have. So that's very dangerous. But looking at the ending balance, you can see that the person spent more money than they actually have. So what does a balance of zero dollars mean, right? If you have zero, you have no money. So negative 30 would be below zero. Let's write that down. The person, Withdrew means take out your money. Withdraw is the present form. Withdrew $30 more than they had in their account. Okay. So let's get focused on math practices. What's an example of a bank account balance that represents an amount owed greater than $40. What's an example? Think about an, an example and write it down. Okay, owed means you owe money means you need to pay later, right? You spent more money than you actually have. So, this person in our example owed $30. He's owing $30 to the bank because that's not his money. He used somebody else's money, which is the bank, right? If you owe greater than 40, what's an example? Well, if you owe more than 40, you can say 41 or any number greater than 40, right? So you can say uh, bank account balance would be negative, maybe $50, maybe, right? Negative $50 would be greater than $40 being owed. And so what does a balance of zero mean again? If $30 is deposit, is deposited into the account, If you add $30 here, the account balance will be zero. A balance of $0 means you have no money in your account. Okay. Alright, so we're going to think about this question throughout the lesson. How are absolute values used to describe quantity? We're gonna think about 
this question. How are absolute values used to describe quantities? Absolute values. Okay. Example one, describe quantities using absolute value. We're going to learn absolute value. Let's read the example. Stock prices rise and fall during the year. The table shows the overall change in the price of a company's stock from year to year. During which two years was the overall change in the stock price the greatest? Look at the years. We have 2005, 2014, 13, and 12. Change in price is different every year. 11, 19, 80, 34, and 6, right? Stock prices, they rise and fall all the time, right? And every year, we look at the total change. It rises and falls, rises and falls. But then overall, 2015 had a positive change, 11, right? It had more, uh, the more positive change. So the prices got higher in 2015. If you look at 2013, it dropped really quickly, negative 34, right? Um, so look at the question. During which two years was the overall change in the stock price the greatest? So we're not talking about the, gr the greatest positive change or the greatest negative change, just overall greatest change, okay? These are already all changes, right? So change of 11, change of 19, okay? Change of negative 34, change of six. Which has the greatest change? Well, negative 34 has the greatest change, right? If we're looking at zero, from zero, negative 34 is really big, right? Compared to six, and 11 and 19, negative 34 is a big change. What's the next biggest change? Yes, then it's 19. So that's your, that's your first biggest change. That's your second biggest change, okay? So if we were to think about absolute value, absolute value represents the distance from a certain point. So the absolute value by definition of a number is its distance from zero on the number line, okay? Distance is always positive, okay? If we're talking about distance, distance always has to be positive. We do not have a negative distance because distance is the measure of change, okay? So if you look at this number line from zero, Five, positive five is five units away from zero. Negative five is also five units away from zero. So we're talking about how many units away? What is the distance from zero to these points? And some of our numbers will have the same distance, right? Negative five would have the same distance as five to zero. So the absolute value is always five because it's the distance. Absolute values is always positive because we're talking about distance. And absolute value of a number is always a positive distance away from zero. Okay, so negative five, absolute value of negative five and absolute value of positive five are both five. All right, so opposite numbers, you can say, the opposite numbers have the same absolute values because they are the same distance from zero, okay? Opposite numbers are positive and negative number n. All right, to find the two years with the greatest range, you can represent that as an absolute value. So 2015, the change would be 11, right? The distance of change would be 11, 2014, 19. 2013, change is 34 units away. 2012, six units away from zero. So the tiers in which the change in stock price was the greatest were 2013 and 2014. Okay, that's how you can justify your reasoning. Let's try number one. The students in a science class recorded the change in the water level of a local river. 
during which week did the water level change by the greatest amount? This is also asking you your distance away from zero or a certain number, right? Water level is going to be zero. So the change, whenever you see the word change, think about distance, okay? Change by the greatest amount. We're gonna use absolute values to represent the change in water level. So the water level for first week is gonna be from zero. You're gonna do absolute value of negative seven over half, right? So that's gonna be seven and one half change. 2.2, absolute value 2.2 is 2.2. Absolute value negative 4.38 is 4.38, okay? They're all positive. And looking at these numbers, what's the greatest change? What is the biggest number? Seven and a half, because seven and a half is 7.5, okay? So the water level changed by the greatest amount in, uh, is in week one, all right? Let's, try, let's look at the convince me problem. Can a lesser number represent a greater change in water level than a greater number? Think about it. The lesser number, right? Smaller number. Can they represent greater change in water level than a greater number? Yes or no? Just looking at our example, look at this. Negative seven and a half, that is the least number, right? The less number than negative 4.38 and 2.2, it's smaller number, right? But does it represent greater change than these two? Yeah, because the absolute value will be 7.5 and that's greater than 2.2 and 4.38, okay? So let's write that down. Yes, a lesser number can represent a greater change in water level. Because what? Because the absolute value of the number could be greater. It could be, it could either be a decrease or increase in water level. Okay, example two, finding absolute value. Let's find each absolute value. Absolute value of negative four. What's the distance away from zero? One, two, three, four. So that's four units away, which is four. What's the distance? from zero to zero, right? From zero to zero, there's no distance. It's just zero. What's the distance between three and zero? Positive three and zero. One, two, three units away. So that's three, okay? Sample three, interpret absolute value. In real life, what do absolute values mean? Let's look at this problem. Negative numbers sometimes represent debts. Yasmin is a business owner. The table shows three account balances that represent her gallery's debts. So his, uh, she is going to look at her debt. Account A has negative $35.42. Account B, $50.99. C, $12.75. They're all negative because they're debts, you, you owe money, okay? So part A, which account has a least balance? Which number is the lowest number? Look at the number line, you have negative 50.99, negative 3.5.42, negative 12.75. The most left 
on the number line would be your least number. Yes, negative 50.99, which is account B, okay? Which account has the greatest debt? They're all negative. So what's the greatest debt? The size of the debt would be 35, 42, 50, and 12, right? So the greatest debt is also account B. All right? So if they all have the same um, signs, if they're all negative, their absolute values are also gonna be uh, similar, but the least number does not mean they're, they cannot be a greater distance, okay? In this case, the least number has the greatest debt. Let's look at the try question. A bank has two customers with overdrawn accounts. Overdrawn accounts mean you spent, you took out more money than you have. Which balance is the greater number? Which balance is the lesser amount owed? Okay, these two questions are different questions. Which balance is the greater number? What, which number is higher? Like it's greater, right? Negative 19 or a negative 23? Negative 19, because negative 19 is on the right side on the number line, then negative 23, right? So we want is the greater number. Oh, wait, we're talking about numbers. So we're going to say negative 19.45 dollars is the greater number which balance so we're talking about the account names which balance is the lesser amount owed so which person has to give back the money less also v long right V long is the lesser amount. Oh, right, because the absolute value of negative 19.45 is 19.45. Absolute value of negative 23.76 is 23.76. So less owed is 19.45. Okay. So that was lesson 2-3, absolute values of rational numbers. Let's summarize our lesson. The absolute value of a number is its distance from zero on the number line. Distance is always positive, so your absolute value is always positive. The absolute value of any number n is written as bar n bar. Okay, you have two bars. The absolute value of zero is zero. And negative four and four, for example, are opposites because they have the same distance from zero, okay? All right, that was lesson two-three absolute values of rational numbers.